First correspondent, Danny Shaw. Police believe the vast majority of people across the UK understand the need for restrictions on travel and gatherings and will comply with the rules. However, since the powers to issue fixed penalty notices came into effect, a number of people have been fined. Senior officers declined to give precise figures, but said the penalties were imposed on individuals in groups who would refused requests to disperse and go home. Police also revealed that since the outbreak of the infection, there had been a small increase in hate crimes against Asian people, and forces were planning for a rise in cases of domestic violence and child abuse, because people were confined to their homes for so long. South Africa has confirmed its first two deaths from COVID-19 on the first day of a strict nationwide lockdown. The number of infections has risen to more than a thousand. There are mixed reports about how well the lockdown is being observed. Our Africa correspondent Andrew Harding sent this report from Johannesburg. If we find we're in, at the same spot, same time, the problem. Overnight, police here in Johannesburg were busy issuing warnings and making some arrests as the lockdown came into force. Can I see your ID? Armed soldiers were also on patrol. By daybreak, some neighbourhoods were deserted as hoped, but elsewhere, crowds have still been gathering at bus stations and shopping malls. Two women, one in her 20s, the other in her 40s, have become the first to die in South Africa after catching the virus. There is uncertainty and frustration here about some of the regulations, not least a last-minute ban on the sale of alcohol and bans on jogging and dog walking. The owner of Sports Direct, Mike Ashley, says he's deeply sorry for what he's described as misunderstandings about his response to the pandemic. On Monday, he claimed the company should be exempt from a widespread closure of shops because his stores were essential for keeping the nation fit. He subsequently closed them following a backlash from MPs and said he would now offer the firm's entire fleet of lorries to the NHS to deliver medical supplies. Thanks, Jay. Perhaps it was inevitable given the stream of meetings, the advisers old and new, until recently the handshakes, the proximity of so many that he met. But still, to hear that the Prime Minister has coronavirus is a sobering moment to say the least, in amidst the most difficult of times. The news came about an hour and a half ago with a message from Boris Johnson himself. I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus, that's to say a temperature and a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken the test that has come out positive. So I am working from home, I'm self-isolating, and that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, uh, thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. The Prime Minister went on to thank everyone involved in the nationwide effort to combat coronavirus, in particular health workers. As we came on air, the news broke that the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, was also tested positive. In the last hour, the government's chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Vallance, has been speaking to Jeremy Vine on BBC Radio 2 and was asked about Boris Johnson's positive test for the virus. We're in the phase now where, where anyone who gets symptoms should self-isolate. That's what the Prime Minister did, um, self-isolated. He's been tested positive. Anyone who gets symptoms should self-isolate. Um, and he's managing meetings, you know, using the appropriate digital tools to be able to do that and still running the government's response to coronavirus. So uh, I think the uh, notion that we can contact trace at the moment isn't the right way to do it. It's the self-isolation uh, and the measures that we've got in place to try and break household transmission. Sure, but one assumes he was isolating as much as possible, keeping two metres distance, etc. And yet he has still got it. Yes, I, I, I mean, we are at the stage where people are still going to get it. As I said, numbers will continue to go up. Um, uh, but with the measures in place, the beginnings of the infection now should be damped right down. So we would expect to see that translating into fewer people with symptoms and definitely fewer uh, hospitalizations and serious illness in two to three, maybe four weeks. Well, I'm joined by Vicky Young, our chief political correspondent, who's at Westminster. Vicky, the Prime Minister's head says he will continue to lead the national effort through video conferencing and the like. That sounds simple, but things will change. Yeah, they will. I mean, I think he's very keen to say his symptoms are mild at the moment and he is carrying on working. And that's why he's put a message out, I think, in the form that he's done, just to 
prove that. You know, we know that he noticed his symptoms yesterday afternoon. Um, he did go outside. We saw him doing the hand clap for the NHS and carers uh, at eight o'clock. He was standing next to, but not very close to, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak. Uh, and we're told that his test result came through at midnight. So he is self-isolating inside number 11, um, using the Chancellor's office for work because he lives in the flat above there anyway. Uh, and we're told that the entrance to number 10 is going to be shut off with work and meals left at the door. Uh, so seven days in isolation uh, for the Prime Minister. Um, but yes, with modern technology, it is much easier than it would have been, but he will be keen to show that he is still leading this effort particularly with the news that Matthew Hancock, who has also, of course, been leading the, uh, all the, the work that's being done in the NHS, he developed symptoms on Wednesday night, he said, and he is also working from home. But lots of questions about who the Prime Minister has seen. And, you know, we have seen in Westminster there hasn't been, at times, social distancing. Uh, I remember uh, Dr Neil Ferguson, you remember, who is the Imperial College scientist, he had the virus and said that he said there was a lot of it around in Westminster. So maybe it's not surprising we're seeing all these people now getting it. These are extraordinary times, Vicky, but this is an extraordinary situation. The Prime Minister himself brought down like this. Yeah, it is. And you know, in some ways people might say, well, it was inevitable that lots of people are going to get it. Um, and we are at that moment, particularly in London, where we are about to get a surge in the numbers. Uh, the scientists have been saying that for quite some time. And I think obviously the concern for lots of people will be that they recover, of course, you know, as far as we know, of course, the Prime Minister doesn't have any underlying health conditions and he uh, says he's got mild symptoms. But what about the rest of the cabinet? They did meet face to face last week. Some were in the room with him this week. Uh, already people are talking about what happens if he does become incapacitated and can't work because it, it, he becomes quite ill. Uh, Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, is the person who uh, is the person in place uh, to take over. But then there are questions about the others as well, the Chief Medical Officer, uh, the Chief Scientific Advisor. They've all been in the same room uh, as the Prime Minister uh, in recent days. And of course, the scientists don't know definitely how infectious you are before you get the symptoms maybe for five days maybe for longer uh, and just looking at the house of commons chamber i mean until quite recently they were crowding in there i haven't seen anyone wiping down the dispatch box the place where they stand in between talking so maybe more should have been done of course they've all gone home now they were sent home